I've been testing these products for a while and liking them, but they're not reaching love status for me for various reasons. Some of those reasons might even be a little bit petty. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. I started thinking that the reasons some of these products might not be working for me might be reasons they would work for you. So I thought I would share them with you today. I have products of all kinds in this video. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these products as we go through the video if you've tried them and what you think about my thoughts as well. So let's go ahead and get into these products that aren't quite fails, but aren't favorites either. This is a great example of why I don't do many first impressions here. And if I do a first impression, I come back with a later review after I've tested that product some more. So I initially talked about First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen in some kind of a haul video a while back, and I initially really loved it for my sensitive combination skin with rosacea. This is a zinc-based broad-spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. It's got some really nice hydrating ingredients. So for me, it functions really nicely as a moisturizer and sunscreen all in one. It's got a really thin runny texture with a slight tint to it. So you don't get that white cast that a lot of mineral sunscreens give you. It sinks right into your skin and massages in like a lotion very quickly right after application. It looks pretty glowy, but as you let it sink in for several minutes, as you should with sunscreen before you apply your makeup, it just absorbs into your skin nicely. It it never leaves me feeling greasy or oily during the day. There's no heavy sunscreen scent either. And it wears beautifully under makeup and doesn't pill under makeup that I've tested anyway. So for me, this is a really nice one-step moisturizer SPF all-in-one product if I do not try and layer anything underneath it. Anytime I try to layer this over a vitamin C serum or a peptide serum, whatever it is, that's when I get pilling with this product. And most days I use those type of serums. So this is a product I have to reserve for days when I'm really in a hurry and need to streamline my skincare or if I'm traveling, days like that. But if you're a skincare minimalist, if you're trying to streamline things and you're not layering products like I am, this may really work for you. When I'm not trying to layer it over something, it works so beautifully. I just wish it would work that way for me all the time. I couldn't not share this at all because it may have a place for you. That's kind of the purpose of this video, I guess. This is Clarins Total Eye Lift. This is a very popular, highly rated eye treatment cream. So there are some really nice ingredients in here. It has a retinol alternative that's supposed to be as effective yet more gentle. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles and visibly tightening and with dark circles. I started testing this out several weeks ago and really enjoy it for both day and night. It's not too heavy for daytime. It wears well under makeup. It's perfect for night nighttime too. The consistency is really great for both. Sometimes I find nighttime eye creams to be a little too heavy for day and vice versa. This is a luxe pricey eye cream. The bottle feels nice and luxurious until you get to the pump. I thought mine was just effective. Sometimes nothing comes out for a few pumps and then all of a sudden a bunch comes out at once, which means I waste product and I do not want to waste any of this eye cream. So I find myself trying to gingerly push on it, but then it still kind of squirts out all at once. It's just a really bad pump. I, I received this from the brand. I, I received several of these products. I don't discriminate. When I give reviews, I'm very honest with you guys. I just thought maybe something was wrong with my bottle. So I looked up reviews and while people like me love the product, the pump is an issue. And I feel like when you are charging this much for an eye cream and the eye eye cream itself is good, the bottle is good, why is this pump not being addressed? I find myself not wanting to reach for it as much as I should, specifically because of the pump. There are other Lux and not Lux effective eye creams I could reach for that have a fully functioning pump. I just do not understand this. So this has really affected my experience with it. Otherwise, it would be great. I've shared my love for House Labs Le Monster Lip Crayons in the past. This is the shade Blush Matte. I have swatched here on the back of my hand and I applied it 
over Huda Beauty Pinky Brown Lip Liner that I had lined and filled my lips in with. These have such a nice lightweight texture and they're smoothing and flattering and they have a velvety matte finish and they're really comfortable. I also love how slim they are. But the longer I've had these, the more I'm bothered by the fact that there's no included sharpener. If you're like me and you have uneven lips and you need some more precision around the perimeter of your lips, a rounded tip is not practical. So I sharpened this with just a sharpener I had laying around. I had to be really, really careful because the product is a, a little bit soft for that. But you can see here, they had so much room down here to turn this silver end into a sharpener. I just don't know why they didn't do that. It even pops out, but there's no sharpener. I, I just don't understand why they didn't take that opportunity to make this a lipstick product that you could be precise with and fill in your lips. So that may be kind of petty, kind of nitpicky, but that alone is why I, I like this product, but I just don't love it. This is the somewhat new Fairy Duster Dry Shampoo from Day. I was excited to try it because it's an alternative to aerosol dry shampoo. There's an optional brush that I kind of thought was overkill, so I just decided to get this. So first off, this smells great. It's got this citrus orange blossom vanilla scent that smells divine. So it's talc free. And this is supposed to, of course, absorb excess oil and boost volume and extend your style. They say that one of these equals four aerosol cans. So a little goes a long way. And I 100% agree with that. They put some nice ingredients in here, prickly pear seed oil, cactus flower extract, some other things that are supposed to nourish and soften your hair, strengthen and improve manageability, and naturally cleanse and exfoliate. Now they say it's transparent and that is where I'm saying no. I have a lot of experience with dry shampoos and so I, I was pretty confident that I can make this work, but the first time I went in, I had so much white in my scalp that it would not disperse. So now I get the brush that I thought was unnecessary. Some people may find it's actually necessary to really scrub it in. I find holding it out for my scalp a little bit, hoofing it in my hair, letting it sit a bit, and then rubbing it in with my fingers. I even took one of my makeup brushes, my more dense makeup brushes, and kind of turned it into a hairbrush just in case I get a little bit too much on my scalp. Sometimes I pump it into my hand and then apply it into my hair. I find that way I can just take it wherever and it's not just in one spot. I think everyone's gonna have their own method for applying this, but my point is that you do have to be very careful with your method and with the amount. I don't find I get a ton of volume, but I do find that it is a really nice dry shampoo. It's especially great if you are wanting to travel by air and you want one less liquid, or if you're just wanting something that's not an aerosol or something that smells really, really good. I think I would love this if it was available in tinted versions, say blonde, brown, black, even gray. I understand it's white because that's the nature of the product that it is, but I mean, if you get a clump in your hair and on your scalp, it's, just, it's really kind of hard to deal with. So having tinted versions would kind of solve that issue because user error happens. It happens to the best of us. It's a nice product. I do like it, but I would love it if it were a little little bit more user friendly and I think a tinted version would make it that way. I feel like for the amount of time that I've been using this, there is a lot left. So a little goes a long way of the Pacifica Future Youth foaming cleansing gel. It's in a lovely luxe glass bottle and it's supposed to be a very gentle cleanser for all skin types that cleanses effectively yet gently and doesn't leave residue. Now they say something in here about giving a rich lather. I do not get that from this cleanser. It comes out in a, a gel type consistency and turns into more of a, a creamy, slightly foamy consistency, but it's not a rich lather, at least not for me. And I mean, I've been using this for 
a little while now. This is one of those cleansers that never leaves my skin feeling stripped. My skin always feels nice and hydrated after I finish using it. There are some nice ingredients in here to smooth, improve texture, protect, soothe, hydrate, calm, and brighten. They kind of focus more on oat and strawberry, and they do focus on the strawberry scent of this product, which is one reason why I was looking forward to trying it. They say it's supposed to smell like soft, sun-kissed strawberry, but what I smell every time I use this is smoky strawberry and it's it's just such an odd smell to me. I guess that's what they're calling sun-kissed, that smoky scent. It's it's just kind of odd. I do feel like my skin is nice and and calm and balanced after using this. I just don't love it for some reason and I think that that smell, that scent is the reason why. I want it to be a, a brighter, more fresher strawberry scent, which, you know, you may find that petty. And some of you may really love the scent of this, but for me, it's just not quite hitting. But I am someone who really loves a sensory experience with my products. They don't all have to smell like fruit. They don't all even have to smell, but if that is a part of the experience, I, I need for it to be fully there and it's just not for this. How do you feel about this video concept so far? Let me know in the comments down below. I had a couple more products I could have added, but I think I'm going to save those for the next one. If you liked this video, that is, and just keep this one kind of short and sweet. Of course, I don't really know how long this is going to end up being, but I could always add them as kind of mid products in my favorites and fails video if you would prefer that. Also, let me know how you feel about the products that I shared. If you've tried those, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in some way. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you haven't seen my Ulta Beauty Week 2 video, it's here with all the products that are included, plus my top picks and the changes that Ulta has made to their semi-annual sale. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!